I'm Coyote Peterson. Right now we're hiking in the southern swamps of Texas, which is home to two different water snake species. One is venomous and one is not. If your life depended on it, would you be able to tell the difference? Stick around, because we're about to show you. As the sun cut through the tops of the cypress trees, I carefully made my way into the swamp. Every step counts when you're in the back country of South Texas. And as my boots slowly splashed through the dark water, my focus was completely in tune with the environment. I knew that it was only a matter of time before I would find the one reptile that most people are terrified of. Coyote, what are you looking for? Snakes, and nothing yet. You know, most people are out there and they're hiking and they stumble upon snakes when they don't expect to. Me, I'm always looking for them. But if you do come across one in the wild, it's really important to identify the species. A lot of times you have a non-venomous snake that will look like a venomous one. Unfortunately, these non-venomous snakes are then vilified as being venomous and a lot of times they end up being killed. Uh, my goal today is to catch one non-venomous snake and one venomous snake so that we can show you the distinct differences between the two. It's a long search out here in the swamps. I'm not giving up. We are going to find some snakes. that this one is non-venomous. Bring up in the light, check that out. That is a broad-banded water snake. Woo! Okay, that is half of the equation right there. Watch your GoPro, he's trying to bite you. Well, that's the safe one. Now we gotta find the moccasin. Woo! Awesome, man, definitely got my thumb. A bite from this one and I'm gonna be just fine. But the other snake we're looking for, the water moccasin, if that had tagged my thumb, we wouldn't be getting shots. We'd be on our way to the hospital. Look at that. Maybe get a little closer to the camera there. Oh, he's bitey. Beautiful snake. Okay, cool. Well, let's keep searching for moccasins. What you did not want to do is just accidentally step on a venomous snake. This is definitely moccasin territory. Moccasin right there. Okay, come up slow. Where? Right up against the side of that tree. Oh, I wow, see. look at how big it is. Um, okay, now this is the real deal. Stay back. Okay. Stay a couple steps back. Now, they usually move pretty slow. I'm gonna try to hook it and bring it up here on the path. You ready? Yep. Careful. from this snake. That one will send you to the hospital. Okay, bringing it up on the path here. Wow, okay, ooh, rattling the tail a little bit. That is a defensive sign, okay. Uh, 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 it should just stop for us. Come here, come here. There we go. All right, what we need to do now is just get the snake under control so that we can get it up close for the cameras. Let me move it back a little bit here. Ah, my nerves are going. Just looking into the water there, and that's how well these things camouflage. I just saw it out of the corner of my eye, just an obscure shape up against that cypress. And that's what these snakes will do. You don't often see them just slithering about like you would a water snake. They'll often be just like this, curled up in a ball somewhere, trying to stay camouflaged, trying to stay away from any potential predators. And then again, if you were gonna try to eat this snake, you better be quick, because if you're tagged by those fangs, you are going to be in a world of trouble. Now this is a water moccasin, but they are famously known as cottonmouths. And watch this, I'll get the snake to open its mouth 
and you'll see that white throat. Look at that. That is a defense. Oh, see, look, you got the tail going now too. You see that? Mimicking a rattlesnake, saying, I am venomous. Yes, we know that you were venomous. I can actually see the fangs tucked back. Woo, I am dripping bullets of sweat right now. Let me back up a touch. Okay, well, perfect. We have the two snake species that are indigenous to this habitat, a water moccasin and a broad-banded water snake. One venomous, one that is not. Stick around and we'll show you which is which. Check this out. Completely calm now, considering the fact just a few minutes ago, this snake was doing everything it could to bite me and get away. This is the broad banded water snake. And look at this incredibly calm demeanor. Now I noticed the same thing with Lake Erie water snakes and Northern water snakes. At first, it's all about fight or flight. If they can't get away and you catch them, they immediately try to bite you. Now the good news for me, like I said before, is that this is a non-venomous species. So how big did the snakes get? I mean, are these snakes get as big as a northern water snake? Yeah, they do. I would say this is about average size for one of these snakes. It is, I'd say about two and a half feet in length, uh, but they can grow to be about three and a half or four feet at a maximum size. Females are larger than the males, and uh, I do believe it's a male looking at its cloaca. Yeah, you're a handsome fella, aren't you? Now, these snakes are often misidentified. People see them near the water and they automatically think it's a water moccasin. This is a very common species all across the southeastern United States. And the reason people mistake it for a water moccasin is mostly the fact that A, it's right by the water, and B, the coloration. I'm gonna turn the snake just a little bit. You see all that dark brown that runs the length of the body, and then that faded banding looks just like a younger water moccasin. But then, of course, if you flip the snake over and look at its belly, look at all that copper checkering. You will not find that on a water moccasin. And not that you'd ever necessarily see the belly of the snake, but I just think that that's really, really cool looking. <laughs> this is actually the first time I have caught this species of snake. And it is just so incredibly calm right now. I cannot believe how comfortable this snake has gotten with us. And we've only been handling it for a few minutes. Oh, but it did musk on me. There you go. See that white stuff on my hand right there? Oh, yeah, it stinks. That is another defense mechanism. Poop on a potential predator if it's trying to eat me. All right, but I'm not going to eat you. Don't worry. We can just hang out and be friends. Wow, this snake. So cool. Well, I think at this juncture we should bring out the water moccasin. I'm gonna hand this snake off to Mario. He's gonna bring in the moccasin. This is gonna be a little bit more dangerous. Hopefully we'll get that snake to just calm down on the ground and we'll get the cameras up close for it so we can show you the distinct field markings of that snake. All right, you ready? Yep. All right, now we're gonna bring in the water moccasin. Uh, just keep your wits about you because this is going to be slightly more dangerous. Okay, let me bring it over here. Slightly is an understatement. Yeah. Hold on, I'm gonna get her to stop. Here we go. So, Coyote, the water snake you just held had anticoagulant in its saliva. This snake has venom. What would this snake do to you? This snake would, depending how your body reacted, it could potentially kill you. There are not many reported deaths from water moccasin bites. However, that venom is incredibly toxic and it will break down your red blood cells. You could lose a finger, you could lose your hand. Let's just put it this way. If I'm tagged by this snake, we are leaving the scene and we are heading to the hospital. So I need to be extra careful right now. Mark, we've got you a couple feet past the snake. We've got Mario just off camera here, making sure the snake makes a move. He can keep it away from you, Mark. But other than that, if we just stay calm and collected, just like this in front of the snake, we should be just fine. You see the snake's not trying to flee, it's just keeping itself low to the ground, it's body spread. Look how wide and girthy that snake is. Now, these snakes, like the banded water snakes, are aquatic. However, they do not dive down underwater to hunt. You will see them occasionally moving from pocket of water to pocket of water, but they usually are hunting on the embankment. These snakes do not have rattles like rattlesnakes, and they rely on their camouflage to keep them hidden. A lot of times people will be walking down a trail, you accidentally step on the snake, and that's how you were bitten. This snake has no interest in chasing or hurting humans. If you just admire this animal from a safe distance, you're gonna be just fine. 
Okay, so the most important part of this episode is that we wanna show you a comparison of this snake next to the broad-banded water snake. Now, to do that, I'm going to have to get the water moccasin under control, which means I'm gonna use my snake hook to gently pin its head and then pick the snake up. Mario's gonna bring in the broad-banded water snake. We're gonna put them side by side and show you the distinct field marks so that you can properly identify these snakes if you ever come across them in the wild. gently going to get position of her head, just like this. There we go. I want my fingers just behind the head like that. Okay. This is the most dangerous thing you can do with a venomous snake. Yep. Never, ever, ever do what you see me doing here. I'll get full control of the body. There we go. Yeah, oh, you notice my hand is shaking. Now, never, ever, ever try to pick up a venomous snake like you just saw me do. And the only reason that I headed this snake is so that we can get both of these right next to each other. I've got a gentle yet firm grip on the back of her head, just behind the venom glands, and full control of the body. You won't see me moving too much more for this scene. I just gotta kinda collect my nerves, stay calm. Uh, Mario, go ahead and bring in the broadband water snake. There we go. Cool, look at that. A little that. nervous? A little bit. <laughs> kind of have a dangerous snake here, Mahana. She's calmed down a bit. You can see her tongue's flicking out now, so that's good. She's not trying to expose her fangs. Now, the water moccasin, because it is a pit viper and it has these two massive venom glands, has a very triangular-shaped head. You pan over to the broad-banded water snake, and its head is actually very narrow. Mm -hmm. However, when these broad-banded water snakes are threatened, they will flatten their heads and puff them up, forming them into a triangle, which oftentimes causes people to miss identify them for water moccasins. It's good news for the snake if it drives off a predator, but it's bad news if that predator is a human, and then unfortunately that snake usually ends up being killed. Um, sorry, a little nervous. Um, let's look on the heads as well at the snake's eye. So I'm gonna just slightly turn. Right, I'll, the... I'll move, you, you okay. stay there. Okay. You'll notice that the water moccasin has a vertical pupil, while the banded water snake has a circular pupil. I don't imagine anybody out there watching is ever going to get face to face with either of these snake species, but if you happen upon one and you see a vertical pupil, you know it's a moccasin and you know that it's venomous. Now the last difference on the face of these snakes is the fact that the water moccasin is a pit viper. Now right up front there you'll see a nostril and just behind that you see another hole in between the nostril and the eye. That is the heat sensing pit which allows these snakes to detect not only their prey but potential predators in the environment. Now, when you look at the broadband water snake, you'll notice that it does not have pits, just eyes and nostrils. When you look at these two snakes overhead, you can see how similar they are in coloration. Now, the broadband water snake has more distinct banding, but if you were to just see these snakes at a quick glance, they are pretty similar looking. But you'll notice that the water moccasin has a much girthier, flattened body as compared to the banded water snake. Look at that difference right there but their scales look similar. They do, don't they? And both species have rough keeled scales, which allows them to quickly be able to move through this rugged environment. Can we see the bellies? I know there's, that's another big difference. Yep. Wow, look at that. Yep. Now, you would, you're never likely to see the belly of these two snakes next to each other, but as you can see, the banded water snake is beautiful and checkered, and the water moccasin is just kind of plain and cream colored. Not that that makes the snake any less special. I smell something, coyote. You do, I smell that same thing. Both of these snakes right now are musking, which is a final defense tactic in the event that something tries to eat them. That musk is coming out of their bottom ends, and if you're a predator and you get that in your mouth, it tastes really bad. So, as you can tell, these snakes have many different defenses against potential predators. For everyone out there watching, we want you to know that these two snakes are very difficult to distinguish from one another. And if you see a snake out there in the wild, definitely treat it as if it's venomous. If it's a moccasin and you take a bite, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. So it's best to just always admire these animals from a safe distance. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, you ready to let them go? Let's do it. Back into the wild with these snakes. Working with snakes is one of the most dangerous aspects of this job. And the reason I do it is so that we can learn about these incredible animals and hopefully walk away with a newfound respect for even the ones that we are afraid of. If you thought this episode was fascinating, make sure to go back and watch as Mario and I compared an alligator to a crocodile. 
And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail.